right, guys. Episode, uh, we're recording on the cloud, and it is episode 22. Um, like like we discussed last episode, we're, we're going to start doing these news, um, I guess, uh, episodes or podcasts, you know, once a week, except next week. Next week, I'm going to be uh, in the Alabama mountains, um, hopefully with zero cell phone signal, you know? Like if I could just drop my phone like out of the car by by mistake and not be able to get one for a week, that'd be you know the it's no coincidence. Whenever I go on a cruise ship, and you do I think you went on a cruise recently, right? Where you can't have a phone. Have you did you take naps like I like I did? That is that is that weird? Naps are a wonderful thing. It, okay, it, but it's, isn't it interesting that when you don't have a phone, you take afternoon naps, and I'm incapable of taking an afternoon nap when the rest of the year? It's not because actually what, what it is is your body is so saturated with adrenaline and all these endorphins because you're, you're just used to all the stress. I mean, you know, like it, it, it just, it's nonstop. And so when it doesn't have that, you actually like crash, like coming off a drug because really it, it is a drug that you're, you're, you're not getting in your system. Yeah, it's uh, you're not the only one to experience that phenomenon. Yeah, I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna turn off my phone. Like I'm just literally gonna turn it off, um, and hope that nothing happens. The world doesn't burn down. Yeah, I'll just tell people to call my wife's phone or or my son's phone, or they'll, they'll be able to get in contact with me. But just you know, they they have to at least know that I'm trying not to get in contact with anybody. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you call you call me through my son's phone. It better be a fucking emergency. You know what I mean? That'd be pretty bad. Yeah. So, um, all right, kind of like we, we got a couple, we got a couple interesting stuff here. You know, we got a couple interesting news here. Um, what do you think about this whole millennials? Let's click on this. This whole millennials um, moving back to the suburbs, you know, has to do with COVID. Oh, wow. Look at that. Lake Nona. Have you been there before? I have not. Well, I'll tell you right now. I'm, I'll be there. I'll be there Christmas night I'm, I'm i got an rv I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm packing up my shit i get my rv tomorrow packing everything up I'll, i'm stopping at lake nona just because i love lake nona that little center right there mm-hmm. you see that go- parking garage see that parking garage back here yeah yeah see it has the zeros and ones yeah so that leads me to believe that the guy who built that whole little boulevard and hotel is some type of like undercover some some tech billionaire or something like that 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 would that would put that kind of subliminal shit right does that make sense to you sure that's very subliminal there just a bunch of zeros and ones who knows you know what i mean like binary yeah yeah who, yeah who catches who catches on to that except you know who knows what i was on when i when i caught on onto that um but uh the beautiful boulevard beautiful um development i mean this is a real estate podcast and we're, we're still going to continue to talk about real estate because this is like amazing they built it i've been going there for three years i found out about this because my my wife and my daughter play tennis and there is a there's the usta um the usta uh, is like the big tennis uh, united states tennis organization um or association or whatever they call it but it has a huge campus right across the bridge from there um, so we went for a tennis tournament and we ran into this place completely by mistake. So now we go there all the time because it has that beautiful boulevard. So the point is that they built a hotel, shops, and a hospital. That's all they built three years ago. Now you go, there's homes, there's, you know, so they go in there, built that stuff, built the, the I guess, the, the minimal requirements, a place to stay to visit. Right, some shops, some restaurants, um, the beautiful boulevard, uh, uh, an enormous hospital, and everything else is just starting to pop up all across. Man, it's pretty <laughs> cool to see that because it's kind of like a little bit in the middle of nowhere. It's right off of a highway exit, but um, it's it's a pretty damn cool place. Um, I have a hookup for the hotel, so if you ever want to go, let me know. I can't tell you what the hookup is, but you know, you got so very field of dreams. They they uh, built it and they build it and the people come. They build it and they will come. Yeah, that's exactly right. I highly recommend Lake Nona. I shouldn't even say this. I don't even want people to find out about that place so much. I, I love it so much that it's kind of like I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. Well, especially when Miami fans people. know about it. So, yeah, all the Miami people will ruin it real quick. <laughs> um, um, 
so yeah, what do you think about the millennials moving moving back to the to the burbs here? What, what's well, your I, I think that that's that that has to be a natural extension of the push to move to work from home. Um, it's freed people up to do this, and the, there, there was kind of there was kind of this fascination with the you know South Beach downtown Miami lifestyle where you know parking your car is a nightmare every single time you have to do it. Um, and, you know, living in, paying 2000 a month for 426 square feet, um, but being able to, you know, stumble home drunkenly from, you know, the 56 bars that are within walking distance of your house, um, that gets old. And, you know, now the bars are closed um, or, you know, at least they're limited capacity, right? And so um, I, I think that, you know, all of that stuff, people tend to outgrow that stuff some. I think you're seeing seeing some of that, plus just the natural change, the freedom to be able to work further from or to work further from work, um, uh, to be able to be working for a company. I have a I have a friend of mine. He's thinking about moving to like Virginia, because he works in my works for a company in Miami. But they have told him now he's never going to have to be on site again, ever. He, he's he works from home now. How awesome! Period. And now you're like, all right, damn. So I don't have to live here anymore. Where? where where am I going to go? Where have I always wanted? I'll tell you where my place would be. I'm stuck here. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, really, <laughs> uh, it, it, is, it is what it is. Not only because of work, it's because kids and, and family and the whole thing. But if I could pack up and go right now, it would, it would be North Carolina. It'd be North Carolina. It's, it's, I've been to the Carolinas. I've been to the mountains. I've been to like, the, you know, I, I've been to the, the, you know, the towns and everything. And it's so beautiful, man. It's so spectacular. It's so beautiful. There's a little, there's a little redneck in there, huh? You know get what, your, man? You know, your hunting I, dog I, was, and your... I was in Wisconsin this weekend and um, loving the cold, man, loving the snow, loving, you know, not, not going, you know, you know, not going to your car and, 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 and going into 110 degree, 120 degree sauna, your ass is sweating. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I really, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was a little too cold. Um, I was fantasizing about smoking a cigar in the cold. And I just wasn't able to accomplish it. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I, you know, I was with my dad. So me and my dad have a phenomenal relationship, but we argue a lot, right? So he's like, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to smoke a cigar. It's too cold. I'm like, dude, I'm going to smoke the cigar. Relax. Just keep on driving. Because I wanted to drive somewhere like in the woods or whatever. He's like, I'm telling you, it's going to be, you know. And he kept on. I'm like, I'm smoking the cigar. Just, just keep on driving. Just keep on driving. So we drive to like this huge field, you know snow everywhere i bought a chair from from um from walmart so i could like open it up and you know just bought, i left the chair over there so i bought the chair just for you know just for for pretty much for that you know just so i could sit down um and uh so first i, I you know take the gloves off to light up a cigar i'm like damn my hands are my hands hurt man you know i'm, I'm trying to like so then i'm like all right well maybe i put one glove on you know, I like this thing real quick, and then I can smoke it with the with the with, with the you know smoke the cigar with the gloves on. And I had some high some high level cigars, some fifty that's not cigars, some some uh, gloves, fifty dollar thermo you know gloves and everything, the most expensive gloves I could find. Um, man, couldn't do it. I didn't last. I couldn't even last three minutes. It was like fifteen degrees. So it was cold. Yeah, that's uh, and that windy. Wisconsin cold is a special kind of cold. And windy. That shit was oh, really yeah. penetrating my soul. Yeah, yeah, no. penetrating absolutely everything, bro. It just it, it I, I, you know I took you know again two minutes and I was like, all right, well it ain't gonna happen today. And I yeah. still have the cigars there. You know, I'm I'm going to Alabama now. It's gonna be cold up there. I'm I'm hoping to hit the mountains. So not the same kind of cold though. Yeah, no, it's not. Life sucks cold. It's 40s, 50s. Yeah, you know. So that, that um, wasn't. I mean. I remember I went to New York City and it was down in the in the single digits. Um, there was a really cold winter, and I was in Times Square. That's where I usually stay when I go, and there was nobody in the streets, like nobody. And it's Times Square, at, you know, nine o'clock at night. Just nobody was out. It was February. Uh, poor life choices again. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just there's a, there's a certain level of coldness where normal yeah. people stay in. Um, take the fun I, out of it. Yeah, and I wonder why there was nobody in the streets. I realized that when I went out to the streets, it gets yeah. real dark. It gets dark real early there too. Sure, no, that or yeah. something. Four, four forty-five. It's dark. The further north you go, man, you go to Germany. It's even worse. But uh, 
I had a, I had a, a guy that I used to know, and he uh, was was getting some work done in the winter, and they hired these guys down from Canada, and the guys just come in like their flannel shirts and no coats or anything like that, and it's you know freezing below freezing, and they're just working, drinking whatever the heck it is they're drinking to keep them warm, and you know I suppose at some point you know you do get used to it. Um, I would think if you live in Canada, you're gonna have to, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's special. Uh, yeah. I wonder, if, you know, talking about COVID, um, I wonder, I know it's impacted every single business, but I wonder if there's a business that it's impacted more than real estate. Hey, look at this ad right here, man. I hate to veer off again. Have you been to this hotel? I know, I know just about every yoga studio that I know of is closed. Dude, listen to what I'm telling you. Believe me, you got to go to this hotel. Scene strong. Okay. Stream song. Stream song. You want to see this? Okay. You want to see how crazy this place is? I've been fishing at that. At that. Uh, I'm telling you, you got to like, I've been there. I've caught alligators. I've caught all kinds of cool stuff in that thing right there. See this hotel right here? It's like a work of art. So you drive in through a huge, um, long passageway. This place is spectacular, man. It's in the middle of, I don't even know what the real location. I found this place by mistake. Deer everywhere. Look at this golf course. Where is it? It's in Florida. Yeah, it's in Florida. The, the thing about it is you drive in and um, they didn't make this hotel to make money. This guy had a bunch of money. It was some billionaire. I forgot who it was and said, I'm, I just feel like building a hotel and I don't really care if it makes money. That's literally like what they explain to you, while you when you go there. And you can just tell by walking in. Everything is just over. It's just art. Like a hotel is is one every architectural you know design uh, award that exists. It is just spectacular. So you'll drive in and you drive in and you drive in for a while. I mean, it's minutes and minutes, and then all of a sudden, poof, that well, hotel a, just pops up. I have a question though. Yeah. How much money? Because I'd love to have that kind of money. Yeah. How much money is the? I just feel like building a hotel. Kind of money. I, I would I would figure it would be billions, right? Because then you would you could build you, you could spend a couple hundred million on a hotel, right? And say to yourself, I've I've just built the coolest hotel maybe in Florida. You know, I mean, it's got to be an interesting experience to have the. I just feel like building a hotel for the hell of it kind of money. I mean, yeah, that that's a level of look. There's archery. There's well, shooting. There's archery, clay shooting. There's there's all kinds of stuff, man. I mean, it's a really, really cool hotel. Let me not veer off anymore. How do I go back to where I was? Right here. So, yeah, anybody there? For all our millions of viewers, we're not sponsored by Stream Song. This is just a I was going to say, man, we definitely should be uh, reaching out to them. Then. Uh, off the cuff, you know? So, um, yeah, I wonder if there's any businesses that have been affected by COVID as much as, uh, as, much as, uh, as, as real estate. I mean, I, you know, I, I would... Uh, we can argue that that absolutely not. I well, I can argue that you know with rates being as low as they are, um, you know, and for as long as they're gonna be, for you know so many businesses, uh, uh, you know, shutting down, leaving real estate open and and empty, vacant, um, so many businesses downsizing, which means that they're moving. So many businesses, you know, going virtual one hundred percent, which means that their space. I, I don't think the regular shopping center is going to be the same shopping center in the next couple of years. The regular office building is obviously, uh, you know, is it going to go more to shared space? Right. Is it going to be, um, is the shopping center going to look the same, that regular big supermarket anchor in the middle? Um, you know, is it, it it's only <laughs> probably going to be service oriented, massages, hairs, nails, people that you shit that you absolutely have to be there for. All the other stuff is probably going to go online. You know? I, I think that there's actually there, there's a few interesting things from what you said. One, I, I think the retail stays largely the same. I mean, uh, I think that the demand for that stuff hasn't really gone away. Um, maybe some of that space gets absorbed into the office space because they have to start pricing the office space low enough to attract people. But I think the, the thing that you said is a shared space. You know, you're going to have a lot of people now that are told, hey, work from home. And they're like, I, I can't work at my home. Like, I, I can't make myself do it. So they need a place to go. So I think, I think shared space is going to be the, is going to be the, the move. 
I think the mini office, mini office will be a, a, a thing. Um, it's already a thing to some extent. I mean, my architect, he's in a mini office space. He's got two little rooms that he, he rents. And I mean, God only knows it. He pays five, $600 a month, but you know, there's no windows. You know, it's a little dungeon in there, but that's where he goes to work. Um, I think it's a thing. And I yeah. think that that's, they're going to have to take and sort that out because now the individual, probably the individual employee may become responsible for their own office space or want to splitting it with their, with their employer or something like that. I mean, cause that becomes an, well, wait a second. I'm saying you can work from home. Look, I can't work from home. Well, you know, all right. You know, we'll help you out with some office space, but you know, you're gonna have to pay part of it yourself or something like that. Hey, give me a second. Let me scream at my kids for a second. Okay. I'll be right back. Yeah, no worries. I've got to say also um, that the yoga space, yoga especially, has been really, really killed by all of this. Um, we've seen uh, over and over again now stu yoga studios especially getting getting just absolutely shut down um, because it's a place where breathing is kind of a big thing. You're asking people to do this with a, with a face mask on. Uh, it's a big deal. Uh, Can I tell you about the gym? Um, so I went to LA Fitness. There's a lady, did I tell you this, running like at almost 10 miles per hour. Whatever the maximum was on the fucking treadmill, that's what, that's what she was running. I'm, I'm a real lady. I, I get on there and, I, and, I, and I, I'm a light stroll type of guy, you know, where I, it's, you know, barely not embarrassing to run that slow. You know what I mean? Like it's a, a light trot. That's, that's who I am. But this lady is fucking hauling ass. Um, and she has her mask on because you have to have the mask on even if you're on the treadmill running, right. okay? And man, she's running at- Hang, hang, hang on, just, just FYI, contrary to the CDC's guidelines, continue. Yeah, don't even, yeah. yeah. The, the, the CDC says specifically that exercising with a mask is dangerous, but go ahead. Right, no problem. So she's running and there's, I see the guy, and I'm, I'm observing this whole thing and I see the guy, you know, going everybody, go put the mask up, put the mask up, you know, your nose. So he stops right in front of the treadmill this lady is just running and it's going down. It's, it's under her nose, like barely under her nose. So he's goes, put it up, put it up. So she's like, you know, hauling ass, man. She puts it up, you know, the guy stays there looking at her as the mask, just because she's hauling ass goes under her nose and tells her to put it up again. And he stays there three or four times telling this lady to put the damn mask on. While she like sprinting, on the motherfucking treadmill. That's already space six feet. You know what I mean? Like, what is going on in this world? What is it's like? A, it's a, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, is, is there? Am I the only one seeing this? Is, is this insane or like? But no, it's fine. You know, I, I, you know, I've been on like a thousand planes. You know. Um, I love when you get off the plane, the plane is 100% full, 100% full. And I tell you because I wasn't happy with my seat and I looked around to see if I could pick a better seat and there wasn't one empty seat on there. And it's, so again, it is, I don't know, 150 people on the plane stuck right next to each other. The second the plane lands says, please adhere to social distancing guidelines when leaving the plane. What? 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 Uh, so I have a one world solution for you. I've told you this before. Delta. Seriously, dude. Delta. They leave every other seat empty. Not that I care about Delta. Delta but you Delta. can be in coach and it's freaking first class pretty much. Still. Oh, no, I agree. dude. It, 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 it's completely. No, 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 I'm asking you. I'm asking you. They still do it? Like, like yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Absolutely. switching over. 100%. Look, man, you fly only one airline. You get the credit card for the airline. You just bang on the stuff. I, I'm, I'm like platinum already. I'm um, pushing my way to Diamond Elite on Delta because I travel for classes. And all the traveling you're doing with your son, man, by all means, they'll yeah. be upgrading in first class every time. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So yeah. this article here, um, man, we, we could talk about this. Maybe we should have started off with this. Uh, I was talking to somebody, one of my realtors yesterday, one of my very successful realtors was calling me, telling me he's going to sell his house. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to sell my house. 
um, and I'm going to hold off a little bit to buy another one. I'm like, why, Lewis? Why, why are you going to hold off? I mean, I know this sounds crazy what I'm about to say, but in the in the, at least the 20 years that I've been in the business full time living off of this business, 100 percent, I've never seen a time where it's equally beneficial to sell a house as it is to buy a house. So sure. are we living in potentially the first buyer and seller's market ever? Potentially. I, I don't know how much what longer. What is it? Is it a buyer's market or is it a seller's market? It's kind of like. Well, I mean, it's, it's a seller's market from the standpoint because sellers definitely pick the terms. I mean, yes. I, I, well, I tell you, I don't work with buyers very frequently. I have a buyer that I'm actually partnering with an agent with right now. He's a good friend of mine. So I'm more intimately involved. Usually when I partner with an agent, they don't they like to just take over and do their thing. But this one, because it's my my friend, I, I'm being very actively involved, right? And so the uh, the I sent the the offer over. We have multiple offers. Send us a DU with the pre-approval, with proof of funds for the down payment, with a waiver of this, with a waiver of that. I mean, just like laundry list of terms. And you know what we had to do? Okay. Yeah. And send it over. You know, no, whatever and, you want. And, and you're right. And, and I know in, in the in the traditional sense, um, the, uh, the traditional definition, you know, it has a lot to do with inventory, supply and demand. So when it comes to supply and demand and the actual definition of, of seller's market or buyer's market is absolutely a seller's market because there's so many buyers for so little yeah. homes. But w I can't remember a time where it's been... You know, somebody says, I want to sell it. Like, it's the right time. Oh, I want to buy it. It, it. It's the right time. Now, you're going to have to put 35 offers on a house, you know, in, in order in order to, to, to get one accepted. But it, it's it's you, the rates you're going to get. I mean, I, I'm seeing people get rates in the two and a half, 2.6, 2.7. Sure. No. I, mean, I just, might never crazy. see that again in, in our lifetime. Well, see, I, I think the one... And this is this is the thing that I keep putting out there. The one fly in the ointment is this this period here where it's such a scarcity of inventory. I think that has to come to a close here soon. I think some of this inventory has to come to market because just so many people have lost their businesses. Um, yeah. I don't think that that deflates Which the market. Will make the market even more perfect. Which is insane. Well, it, it'll it'll increase the number of transactions. I think, but what it will slow down is the rate of appreciation. The homes which, aren't going to which is which is good. It it needs to. It honestly, it the home it, it has to. It, in order to be healthy and sustainable, it needs to. And so for me, I actually, you know, like I've been. It, it's weird with buyers. You know, they kind of get it in their head. They want to buy a house, and they want to hear, "Hey, you know, give it 60, 90 days. You know, just just let it breathe for a little bit longer here. Let's let's get through. You know, because at some point they're going to have to take and and w get rid of all of this forbearance they're doing. When they do. You have a lot of homeowners. I mean, I, I, I was just talking to somebody about the stat the other day. I think it's going to be January, February, man. I think people are waiting for kind of like the year. And I think January and February, we're going to see a lot. Nobody's putting their house on the market in, in December. Nobody. No. I think January, we're going to see a lot of homes out there. Sure. And, 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 and February. And I think people are going to look to take that this, this 2021 as uh, we, we've, you know, it's been branded as 2020. 2020 is a nightmare in 2020. Can't wait for 2021. Whether... Anything's going to change in 2021 or not for the better doesn't really matter. It's, what, it's a perception of, you know, it's, you know, it's unfortunately what the media says and what everybody else oh, said, oh, 2020 is over. What a year. All right. 2021 is going to be better or it's going to be different. I don't think it's going to be different at all, but I think people are going to see it as that way. And, and whatever they're going to perception do. Wise, it'll be different. That what? Perception wise, it might be different. People might perceive yeah. it differently. But, you know, I mean, all they've been getting is the brain damage nonstop of how horrible things are. Um, and, I mean, I think it was just like a day or two ago, we, we passed the normal number of deaths that we would have in a year. Okay. Get, get, get this, just, just think about that for a second. Yeah. December 21st, I think it was. Right. End of the year. Right. So, so we had nine extra days worth of deaths from this right. whole thing. Yeah. Now, not to say that it wasn't a concern at the beginning and all sorts of things, but to sit here and brand it as something. Oh, it's because I mean, every other it's because every other disease disappeared. So, well, here's the thing: when you see what the carnage is going to be, the number of people that are going to lose their homes from this, 
not lose through foreclosure, but be forced to sell. Because 90% of all businesses in existence in America today were started by somebody taking out a loan against the equity in their home. That's, that's that, an, that a real number. You pull that that is a real that. number. It's over 90% of all the businesses that exist in America today were started by people taking out a loan against their primary residence. Interesting. I did not know that. So when they talk about our real estate being the primary wealth building tool in the United States of America, they're not making this stuff up. It gives you the opportunity to take and do things. The problem is now we had a situation where a curveball that nobody expected came and hit these folks. And now they're going to, they took a risk, which anybody that takes a risk should be applauded for taking a calculated risk. You know, it, that there's plenty of money, Monday morning quarterbacks out there. Oh, so stupid. <laughs> you know what? They took a risk. They tried. Those of you that, that sit there on the sideline on a Monday morning quarterback, you're always going to be sitting on the sidelines, guys. You're never going to get in the game. So yeah, there's right. You're right. If you're not in the game, you can't get hurt. But if you're not in the game, you can't score a touchdown either. So it's it, here's it's here's another here's another thing that's going to um <clears throat> that's going to affect inventory. A lot of these people that have um right here the thousands of Floridians uh, evicted, thousands of Central Floridians, and which, which that's going to end up being all of Floridians. Um, people that haven't paid since March, April are going to have to start, are either going to have to leave the home that they're at right now, right? Get evicted. But the, you know, investor who had, you know, a, 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 res a residential property that, you know, he had rented out and he got, you know, a couple of tenants that, you know, decided not to pay and he can't evict them. Those people are probably going to end up being on the market too. You know, so that whole... I don't, you know, I, I don't know if there's been that much of it, Jesus. I, I know from a property management company that we have, we didn't see a, as much of it as I thought. I thought we'd see a ton of it. You know, like, hey, there's a moratorium on eviction. Nobody's paying. We only had one property where we had that problem in any of the properties that we own or manage. So I don't know how big. Right. But, he, but here's the thing, though. You are. Um, your screening process. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I know this because we've discussed this. Your screening process to get these people in there. Um, you're a professional property management company, sure. Right, you're not mom and pop. I know a bunch of people that own property that are, are getting their asses kicked. Yeah, sure. that they're just you know regular Joe Blow has one or two sure. properties, and you know, and it's like anything else, they sense weakness. I, I mean, I've helped, I've, 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 I've been there seeing you handle people. You know, and and you're not an easy guy to deal with when it comes to that, and and people and people <laughs> putting it nicely, not, not to call you a dick. <laughs> so <laughs> the shoe fits, and they see it, and they see it. So um, you know, I, I think that has to do with it too. They they know you're not going to play games. Um, That's and it. Uh, but I think that there is a, a a a an absolute percentage of the of the of investors out there that are just regular mom and pop people that are getting their asses torn apart right now sure by um by this whole moratorium and everything like that you know so well i mean as this comes to an end you're, you're gonna have to see i mean the other the other piece of it is the rents really haven't come down and rents are very strong um i know that we just took up a couple of our properties that we, we took that um uh, that we had tenants leave on we took the rents up 10 15 percent um and the market seems to support it um, so, I mean, there's some areas, actually, the, the one that surprised me, Hialeah, the rents had not been as strong. Um, really? As in, yeah, I was really surprised by that. There was actually available inventory. There was, there was, because I mean, usually I look at Hialeah, there's, you know, one property available in a 10 mile area. How do we describe Hialeah to our millions of viewers that might be, you know, maybe Wichita, Kansas or uh, Nebraska? How do, how do we describe Hialeah to our Hialeah mid, is Midwest? You know, it is it an older, um, older for Florida, South or Central American country that lives within the borders of uh, Florida, but Caribbean, South Central American country that uh, you, you don't it need. Is, a, you don't it need is absolutely to there. okay. So a lot of you are going to think that we're okay. So I'm going to make sure that I don't exaggerate anything I'm about to say about <laughs> how it will take. It'll take the fun out of it. Okay, so everything I'm about to say is an absolute fact and um you know there's no need to exaggerate so uh 90 something percent of the population does not speak english 
period, end of story. Um, it is a city inside of Miami, but has its own address grid. So you'll be, you know, I don't know, for, uh, let's say 70 something Avenue and 120 something. And all of a sudden it turns to 45 West, whatever. So they decided to, to not connect to the rest of the address grid. Right. So it has its own address situation going on, which makes everybody get lost on the way over there for whatever reason, GPS is don't work there. So it's kind of like um, the Bermuda Triangle. Let's be honest. It, it's, it's like the Vatican City. It's like a country within a country. Okay. Without a wall. It doesn't have a wall, right? Um, there is no wall. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't to build a wall on there. You, you, don't, you don't even know you're going there. And next thing you know, all the billboards are in Spanish. Uh, everything. everything, yeah. And then, and then your GPS gets confused i think that the billion dollar gps system machine says fuck this place i'm not even going to waste my time figuring out what's going on here and let everybody just get lost in there so and what happens is that there is areas there that um you make a left you end up in a pretty bad neighborhood so you know it's, yeah, it's like a medley. tricky a tricky place to go if you're like a you know a, a, a Maybe you're an older woman by herself or something like that. You, you got to be careful. You know, you got to know where the hell you're going there, right? I mean, between that and Medley, I went from Hialeah to Medley. And that's, I, I assume that whoever does the streets just forgot that place existed. Because, I mean, that was just potholes and that, that's, a, that's a special place. Right. And um, it's also uh, number one, it's the fraud capital of the United States, there's more Medicare and credit card and every type of fraud than any other state. This is a city, a tiny city. <laughs> it has more fraud in that city than any other state in the United States. And here's, here's the part where it's very clear. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta reiterate that I'm not exaggerating. Combined. So there's more fraud there than any other of the states combined. Okay. So that's how I leave. Um, yeah. For years, the code, the construction code was left on, um, I guess, a supervised. Unaddressed, unsupervised. Unaddressed, unsupervised. So for, for many years, I, I worked the area because I had to, but I tried not to. So you would go on the tax roll and it would be a 2,000 square foot single family residence and you would show up and, you know, it showed on, 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 the, on, the, on the MLS uh, that it's a 4,000 square foot, two floors. So motherfuckers just decided to build a second floor on it with absolutely no code. No. <laughs> Just, I mean, zero, just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to build a second floor on the house. I'm not going to get any permits. I'm not going to get any anything. Well, I mean, and let's, let's be it. honest, man. I mean, in, in parts of the world very close to here, that is the norm. You know, I know you go, to South, you, go to, you go to Central America, that's the norm. You go to the Caribbean, that's the norm. Um, you know, it's just, hey, uh, we're having a baby. Throw another room in the house. Yeah, kind of like, and, and by the way, if, if it wasn't that you had uh, a, a Cuban in this conversation right here, this conversation would, would be deemed racist. Oh, uh, of course it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible you'd be, uh, person. You'd be, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, typing. I'm a horrible person for, for stating fact. I mean, it's not, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not that I'm, I, I'm picking and choosing my facts. I've gone and visited these places and they don't have a building. You know, um, I just watched it actually, and this was really mind blowing. I went to, um, this is something that actually is probably a very good topic at some point to talk about. I went to uh, PGT, who is one of the big window providers. They have a, a school that you can go to. And so they had the video of this giant room that they build these two houses in. One home is called Fortified, and one home is just built to building code, right? And so they blow the wind at the two houses. And the one house at some point, the building code house, just absolutely blows away at some point. And the other home is still standing there like nothing. Like you honestly think it's a joke that they can't be in the same room because nothing happens, not a shingle, nothing on the other house. And so 
they're talking about it. And the difference in price between doing the two homes was like $3,000 in construction costs. I was blown away by it. But they showed- No pun, no pun intended? Literally, yeah, that's no, pretty, pretty, pretty solid. But they showed pictures. The reason why I was, I was thinking about it is they showed pictures of, of an earthquake that happened in, in Haiti, where there are no building codes, and then another one where it happened in Chile, where there are building codes. And in Haiti, they, they heard the earthquake was significantly smaller than the one that happened in Chile. But because of the way the building codes are, building codes are not designed to save buildings. Didn't know this. It's designed to save lives, right? So like the buildings in Chile, like they, they, they fell, but they didn't completely collapse in on themselves. So they didn't kill people. The building has to be torn down, but the, the number of deaths was like 85 deaths versus like 8,000 deaths in a smaller earthquake in Haiti. Um, and so, you know, the, the building codes do matter. It was a really cool video. It's probably on YouTube. It's worth checking out um, between the two houses. So anyway, a little useless factoid. <laughs> um. Jobless, as many as 650,000 Floridians, include, including an estimated 500,000 whose state unemployment benefits have expired, could receive federal pandemic employment assistance payments between Christmas and New Year's, okay? That's a lot of Floridians, unemployed Floridians. You know, mm -hmm. if, 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 you know, how is that going to affect our market? I, I think, and, and, you know, we're in a weird situation. I was talking to one of my agents a little while ago. Uh, he left to another company and came back, which is to me the biggest compliment. I have that a lot, actually. A lot of agents, um, not a lot of agents, but we have a less than a 1% turnover ratio. But even of that 1%, less than 1%, um, half of those come back. And, uh, and you know, that, that's, that's the biggest compliment. So in this particular case, um, it's, uh, you know, I'm telling them, I'm like, look, you know, if, if you're going to do this whole go full time in real estate, it, it's right now is the time. I can't think of a better time. I can't think of a better time for you to go out there and, you know, and, and, and try this. Your issue is not going, your issue is going to be closing transactions. It's not going to be, where do I get buyers or where do I get sellers? It's just going to be, you know, how do I close them? It's going to be transactional, which is what, you know, what we're the, we're the experts in. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. And if you add, you know, oh, and I, the, my point is that I was telling him, I'm like, look, it, it kind of sounds, a little, you know, very messed up, but, but COVID has been the best thing that's happened, happened in real estate. Just like, you know, 650,000 Floridians, you know, um, or, or 500,000, you know, with, with unemployment benefits that expire is also a good thing for real estate. And it sounds messed up, you know, but this is a real estate podcast and I got to talk about how things affect real estate, you know? Um, we need more inventory. So, you know, people having to sell their homes is, is something that, that we need. So it's, it's a rare circumstance where you look at the news and almost every set of bad news is good for real estate. Um, you know, I saw your boy Biden uh, said that the e <laughs> exact quote was even... Uh, um, COVID pandemic to get way worse, even with the vaccine. So now it's like, all right, so while we have a vaccine, but things are still going to get way worse, the human me says, dude, why do you keep on scaring people? Like, let's, let's go back to regular life. If he right? was elected on, if he didn't have COVID, there's no way he could possibly have gotten elected. Right, but m m human me says, dude, can you stop scaring people already so we can get to regular normal life? Real estate, Jesus, says, brother, keep on. Keep on keeping on. Keep on making me go to an airport and seeing a one-year-old like in a fucking stroller with a mask and a face shield on. True story. Yep. Right? Just keep it going. Because the longer you keep it going, the longer, you know, it's nobody dies of anything else but COVID, the, the, the longer this real estate market is going to last. And the longer, the longer I, I, I will be living through the best real estate market in the history of real estate. Um, it's kind of a weird situation. I kind of want this. I want it. I want it to end. You know, I, I want to stop having to wear a mask everywhere I go. 
You know, I, I want, you know, people to stop, you know, if my mask goes a little bit under my nose, I want people to stop having the power to think it's okay to tell me to put my fucking mask up. Right. Like, who are you? Right. To, you know, I was at Starbucks um, at the airport. Man, I'm telling you, it was just one of these moments where I just took off the mask for like, you know, like a second, just, you know, and you know, you know what I mean? Like, just, just, you know, like kind of, you know, touch your ears a little bit and like, you know, and so I feel I, like a human being. Yeah. And, and put it back on and kind of like, I'm telling you, kind of like it, it, it wasn't even five seconds where the lady that was in front of me felt the need to tell me to put my mask on. I'm like, ma'am, I took it off for a second just to breathe and touch my face and my ears. Please, mind your own business. Okay, you have your magic mask on. Don't worry about mine. It's just crazy. How long are we gonna continue to live like that? But then again, I put my mask on. I'm like, hey, man, hey, thank you, ma'am, for keeping the rates, you know, at a two and a half percent, right? And, and you know what? I didn't think of actually thanking her, but I should have thanked her. Well, you better sneeze on her. Huh? Or sneeze on her. <laughs> Dude, there's cameras everywhere. That I, something like that, you better rest it now, baby. Uh, no, nah, man, look. It, I, I don't know that that's that this market is sustainable. This market is in crisis. Um, and so, you know, they've done a lot of things to bail this out. But, you know, is there a point where the music stops? Because, you know, you do have a lot of people that can't participate in the market because they're out of work. You say that number for, for Florida. Our tourism industry is largely shut down. Um, that's where those jobs are coming from. Now, the other industries here, I mean, our governor has been, been fairly friendly to business. But I mean, also realize this, the reason why they want to scream and, and, and push terror about this thing is because is it allows them to take and do, it gives them a tremendous amount of power uh, and allows for government overreach. And you've seen a lot of government overreach in a lot of places. Uh, I mean, look at California. I mean, it's mind blowing. They're shutting everything down. And in the last three days, I mean, they have like three times, four times more cases than anybody else now, even though they're completely shut down. So I don't know. I mean, it would seem to me like there's no correlation between the shutdown and, and stopping deaths, only that, hey, we were going to have all these extra deaths if we didn't do this. Okay, maybe at the beginning, but I don't know now. It seems like Florida's not really, you know, setting the world on fire on deaths. And I go to the gym every day. Guy, yeah. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to go to hell for this but I probably exceeded the CDC's guidelines for my Christmas party. And you know what? I had some people that actually were like, well, how many people are going to be there? Oh, we're not going to be able to attend. It's like, okay, your loss, no problem. You, you know, you know, you know why I think it also is, it's also going to stop because if you're a, a, a mayor or a governor and you're out there saying, don't, you got to wear a mask, don't have Christmas, don't go see your family. And then you got to go around hiding to see your family. And you got, you can't take that damn mask off no matter what. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, dude, they, 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 they wanted to end too because of that, you know, just the mask alone. I think the mask will go away before all the other fears and stuff like that. I think the mask is such a, a damn inconvenience that for everybody that, that these politicians, them, also, they they also want to stop wearing the mask. You catch I, I them know. all the time in restaurants, and you know, and 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 even even a uh, 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 gruesome newsome, you know, he he's 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 been caught, you know, uh, without a mask, and he's the one who proposed that you put the mask down, take a sip, and then and then put it and then put it back up again. So yeah, yeah. No, no, I I don't know if you know it, but the, the, when he was caught at the, that restaurant with too many people and without a mask and all that kind of stuff. Not social distancing. And yeah, all, all that stuff. Those were the medical experts that helped him. Those were the people that were there, were his medical experts. Well, that I did not know that. Well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you talk about the absolute <laughs> arrogance and hypocrisy, you know, it's good enough for you. Here's the thing. I think, and I may be dead wrong, but I think the mask is the thing they give us to make us feel like we're doing something, you know? We, we know that this is going to have to take and run its course. So here's something to make you feel like and keep us arguing with each other about, you know, whatever. 
But in reality, this is going to have to take and work itself out. And I, I think that's where we are. I mean, uh, I, I'm very happy to see, you know, millions of doses of, of vaccine go out every single day. And, yeah. You know, they're all making their PR push, getting their shot like good little soldiers. Um, you know, I mean, God knows Joe needs it. He can't even get out of the shower without hurting himself. So we definitely need to make sure he's vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it's the, the, the thing that I, and I think this ties in with this thing until we can get back to business and it's not just going to be a U.S. problem because international tourism is a real big portion of our economy. I mean, it's not the biggest, but it does matter. And it does matter for a lot of people's employment, include especially here in Florida, where, you know, we have people that come to Disney World all the time, right? Um, until we can get back to some sense of normalcy and have that proliferate around the world, where the places, the major tourist places, the people that we get tourists from, um, we're not going to take and have the buyer pool available that we, we, do, we, we need. Um, now, it's great that the market is the way that it is without the buyers, these people being buyers. But, you know, at, at some point, we're going to need those buyers in the market to take and help and sustain it. Yeah, let's... Uh, uh... Let's see, there's an article that we we, we want uh, we touched up on in the beginning, but I kind of it's kind of what got us started. I wanna I wanna hit it up again. The New York one. Things up. The New York luxury one. Yeah. Um, real estate could be a bargain again. Yeah, this was uh, this was an interesting article, Lisa. Um, it's, and the thing that that I find pretty interesting is it, it's a couple of realtors trying to put their spin on the, the New York market, uh, talking about how prices there in the luxury market have gone up and, and all that sort of thing. Um, but with the, they don't seem to be talking a whole lot about the size of the inventory. And so that is the, that is the, 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 the thing. Um, you know, they, they're talking about the luxury market and that's not the market that I think that most of us are, think are, is, is gonna get hammered. I, I think it's gonna get hurt in New York. I, I know that right now it's, they're saying that it's up over the uh, year to date. Um, but I, at the same time, if the inventory itself isn't at the same level, or isn't there, as, there aren't as a number, the same number of transactions, then it doesn't matter what the prices have done because we yeah. have this. this I don't outcome. believe that article at all. Um, and this is where we got to kind of be careful because, again, you know, you get a press release, you get a good publicist, and, and all of a sudden you put an article out that's just kind of a yep. little bit misleading. Um, I don't, I don't believe that things are, are, are going to go even in, even in New York. Um, you know, I think there's, there's enough, still enough, um, you know, buyers out there to continue to keep that market healthy. I don't think, you know, I, I just, I just don't, pr prices will continue to sink. Buyers will have more options than ever. I'm telling you the, the thing is going to be when the moratorium on foreclosures, when these banks actually start to take and put pressure on these these people that are not paying to start paying their mortgage or get out, you're going to see these inventories, especially in places where you have a lot more people hurt, that the economy of New York is significantly more damaged than other parts of the country. I mean, we're seeing it in California that has the strictest I mean, it's probably the most affected place by by COVID because of, because of the uh, of the archaic archaic you know uh, 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 you know uh, uh, politics that that are that are happening there. Um, and and it's what what was it we said the other day? It's out of out of uh, out of the ten top top ten markets of twenty twenty one. It's six of them. Yeah. So I think the same thing currently. But I mean, I just watched read another article the other day that I believe it's Oracle is moving to te moving to Texas and joining like. A lot of the startups seem to start in California because there's a lot of infrastructure to do that, but the bigger companies are moving out. Um, and so that's a, that's a tremendous tax base loss for them. Right, because I, I think 2021 might be the best year in, in New York history and California history and, you know, Portland history and, and all of these places that, that, that I think there's going to be more transactions because of people, you know, leaving. Well, the and question still, the rates are still low that there's still going to be a uh, a, a, a nice uh, a healthy inventory out there so if I don't know ten percent of the population leaves which is a lot I mean it's it's a it's a ridiculous number that probably is never going to be reached 
No, but one, one, one or two percent is enough to take and create a big problem for them. Say it again. Two percent. One, one or two percent is a, a huge problem for them, especially considering they're a state that survives on their their state income tax. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a revenue issue for them, and so it, it's going to and and this is this is a th- I mean when you listen to what they want to do, they want you to stay home. Then they want to use your tax money to pay the businesses to stay closed. So basically all that's happening in the transaction is you're losing the service that, you, you know, you want to go out and buy a meal from a restaurant. Right? You'd get fed and you'd give them money, right? Well, now you're going to give them money anyway, but you're just not going to get the meal. Um, it, it's kind of crazy how, how the, they, they perceive the government as the intermediary to keep this, this economy running with, with these shutdowns. Um, but I don't think it's sustainable. And what I think you're going to see is there is going to be a lot of inventory that becomes available in those places because I think the buyers that they're expecting aren't going to be there. Um, they're, they're, they're losing people rapidly. And while California people do go to California, a lot of people, a lot more people are leaving California than used to. Um, and it's it seems to only be getting more and more. They're, they're using every opportunity they can to make more and more over government overreach Type well, there, there's no there's no worse place to be if you're a business owner than New York and and, and California right now. Just, and, and and Michigan. And Michigan, it's just crazy. It, it's you know draconian. Just yep. Here you go. These are the rules. We why we say so. No outdoor dining, but there's no science to support that COVID spreads from outdoor dining. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. We're closing on outdoor dining. Doesn't matter. I, I mean, I read the one study I read the other day. The most likely place you are to get COVID is in a government building. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, the DMV or someplace like that, you know. But what are you supposed to do? You're forced, unfortunately. To, I mean, I don't know about you. Every time I have to interact with the government, state, local, whatever, I, I never look forward to it. No. Uh, you got to call the IRS. Uh, Horrible uh, attitude. Yeah. Well, there's no competition. So what are you going to do? Complain to the supervisor? Ah, the customer hates you. Good job. I, I've also know. seen. I've I've also seen. You know, at 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 places, I've seen a a a, a sharp <clears throat> decline in customer service in places that would be high in customer, like like Starbucks, for example. You walk in there, man. Don't sit down. Put your mask up. You know, it, it, you you can't sit. In, you you can't wait there. You got to wait outside. I mean, it's just. It is, it, you're, you're treated like, uh, I, I walk into Dick's, I forget, I completely forget my mask. I, I just, I mean, I'm on the phone. Um, I think I had it in my pocket. No, I had it in the car. And I walk in, lady screams, stop. Like, fuck. I, I, man, I'm telling you, I just d- didn't remember. Um, she, she's like, you don't have a mask on. I'm like, oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, uh, you want me to go back to the car or you have one? She goes, I have one here. But step back step back like you know and and then she puts the mask on a thing steps away come inside here's the you know like it's like man that's a store that i'm going in there and getting treated like i mean it's i i just i just i just don't understand it and and, you know out of our millions of viewers here there's going to be people that think we're fucking crazy you know because they are that person there you know what i mean so I don't know, man. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. So it kind of like Merry Christmas, to you Happy as well. New Year. I think you and I got a, got a, out a there as well. we got a Zoom call coming up now. You and I. All right. Well, to um, all everybody out there, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Uh, I hope everybody has a happy, healthy, safe, safe one, and uh, enjoys enjoys some time with family and friends, despite what. Yeah. Everybody does. And anybody who wants to call me in the next. Um, Till January 4th, don't call me. As a matter of fact, I get back January 5th. So January 4th, I'm still in my RV, driving down, taking my time, enjoying every last second of this. So please do not call me unless you absolutely need to, okay? And uh, it has to be an absolute emergency. And there shouldn't be an emergency during those times. So I'm gonna pretend I'm on a cruise ship. So, all right, Cadillac, I'll see you in the next Zoom call in a little bit. And I'll see you for episode 23, uh, beginning of June, of January. I keep on saying June, beginning of January. Sounds good, bud. All right, bud. See you in a little bit.